This picture here is from Medan Tahrir, where I spent the whole of the revolution in Egypt. That is to say, the whole of the revolution until uh, Mubarak was removed from office. It was very significant that on the 12th of February, which was the day after Mubarak stepped down, a number of people still in the square said to me, you know, the removal of Mubarak doesn't signal the end of the revolution, it just signals the beginning. We had to get rid of him before we could start changing our country. But getting rid of him was the vital first step. My name is Eamon Giran, and I'm an historian and Arabist who spent close to 20 years living and working in the Middle East, trying to understand both its history and how it affects the world today. A well-spoken, articulate, obviously in tremendous command of his subject, um, new details that we were fascinated to hear and loved his sense of humor, the little asides that he injected every now and again along the way. I bought Mr. Guerin's book because uh, I think that whole area is a fascinating part of the world that really no one has treated royally like he does. It's fabulous. He's not rambling all over the place. He's not putting it on, shooting from the hip, as they say, but it's very well structured. Research, yep. fabulous, I love it. Exceptional. I'm probably gonna go to Eastern Seaboard to see some of his conference. Very interesting, brought back a lot of uh, memories that I'd forgotten all about. He's, he's um, renewed a, an interest that I had many, many years ago and I just brought his book and uh, waiting to talk to him again and hoping that um, he'll buy me a drink one day. It's understandable, but unfortunate, that Western media tries to sum up events in the Middle East with a soundbite, a 20-second gobbit of news that really can't even scratch the surface of what's happening across the region today. We can watch uh, TV, we can watch Fox News and CNN and get snippets and perspectives and sound bites that are very small. But it's great to get the perspective of someone who was actually there and can give you truly an unbiased opinion of what's going on, kind of gives you uh, a true sense of what's going on in the region and gives you a good comfort zone too that it's not all chaos and it's also not all wonderful as he, as he pointed out. Uh, so it was very interesting, very much appreciate the talk. It's important to understand that each country in the Arab world, whether they be in North Africa or the Gulf or beyond, are unique entities of their own. There is no monolithic Middle East. Each country has its unique circumstances, unique histories, cultures, and traditions. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the American Army, and I've fought all over the Middle East, so a lot of his talk was insightful and truthful, and it would have been handy to have a lot of this information up front during the initial stages of the invasion. He does it interestingly and fascinating, and I'm, I'm buying the, the book on the Sahara because I have flown over the Sahara, and I look down at all of that tremendous amount of sand and rock and I wondered about it. And now here's the man who, in a book, is telling me all about it. We have to look at the particular circumstances of each country across the Middle East. And while mainstream media perhaps doesn't have the time to do this on the six o'clock or 10 o'clock news, in my talks, I do have the time. And we have the opportunity to spend 45 minutes or an hour on any given subject. He is obviously passionate about that region of the, of the world and it communicated itself, I thought, very clearly in every one of the lectures that we heard. He was quite astonishing, and we enjoyed it tremendously. Oh, the way he spoke, he just rolls, just keeps on going. It's just automatic. 
perfection, really. Oh, he's a great speaker. I, I wish more college professors were more like him instead of the more rapid fire, just dump out facts and information. He had a really good dialogue with the audience. For close to 20 years, I've been living and working across the greater Middle East. That's everywhere from Kabul to Casablanca, from the Arabian Gulf to the shores of North Africa, and out to the Hindu Kush in Afghanistan. In that time, I've met all sorts of people, from high officials to ordinary people, the unemployed, the wealthy. All of them have their own tales to tell. And these stories are what qualify me to speak with some authority on the events in the Middle East today.